Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tanya West and I am the product manager for Smoothwall here in Asia Pacific. I work alongside with In Technology Distribution and we are the distributor for Smoothwall here based out of our sunny Gold Coast office. And what I'm going to do now is introduce Dave Waring. He is our technical solutions manager for Smoothwall. So I'll hand it over to him to introduce our webinar for today. Good morning, my name's Dave Waring. I've been involved in education technology for a number of years. Um, I'm a network security uh, engineer by trade, uh, focusing mainly on content security. So anything to do with websites or email and things like that, that's the kind of stuff I'm involved with. And more recently, I've been involved in digital safeguarding, particularly in the education space. So that's what I'm going to focus on things on today. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through a, a number of different things. First of all, we're going to talk about what safeguarding is, a little bit of an overview, you know, why we think it's it's important why it should be the focus you know of, of what we're doing I'm going to talk a little bit about the what we call the management debate this is a little bit of a strange thing uh, about how we actually deploy devices and what's possible and what's not possible depending on various deployment strategies and scenarios they're going to introduce who Smoothwall are uh, and we're going to look at the tools and uh, products which Smoothwall bring to the party to help us identify digital safeguarding issues and whether those issues are uh, relevant and uh, need further action so let's crack on. I'm going to try and keep things down to 30 minutes today. Uh, I usually do some polls and audience participation in these kind of things. I'm actually going to cut those out today just so we can get through the content because we want to go through those tools. And if you hang around to the end, hopefully we've got something a little bit special. We've got a, a brand new thing which we want to show you. It's going to be announced here and shown here for the first time. So please keep uh, around until the end and you know we can show you what that is. So what is safeguarding? And you know, safeguarding means a number of different things to different people. But I think over the last few years, we've actually, as a um, uh, as a society, kind of got our heads around what we mean about safeguarding and well-being, particularly in a digital setting. It's behaviour which is either problematic or uh, of risk of real-life consequences to our young people. And this can be a variety of different things. It might be things related to uh, well-being to the person. So, you know, things like suicide, self-harm, those kind of mental health issues, depression and uh, psychological distress. Or it might be things where it's uh, targeted at other people. So the cyberbullying, discrimination, victimization, those kind of things. Or indeed, it might be things which are of harm to society. So things like criminal behavior, uh, petty theft, drug usage, those kind of antisocial behaviors also come under the umbrella of safeguarding and well-being. The key thing which I always like to focus on, though, is when we're looking from a technological standpoint, we're trying to understand what behavior is happening and get an idea of if further action is required. I, I focus very heavily on this indicators of behavior activity. If we can actually find things which are showing a certain pattern, we can then take further action. And it, that action is very, very needed. In, in today's society, you know, with, with, with very uh, recent kind of research coming through from, you know, uh, uh, sources like the Australian Office for E-Safety Commissioner, uh, we have, you know, a, a very high level of young people being exposed to victimization and cyberbullying. You know, over 20% of our young people these days are, are, you know, being having that behavior targeted towards them. And over a quarter are actually engaging with uh, activities with people of unknown, uh, you know, strangers online. So, you know, the, the actual place where this behavior is happening, it's certainly happening and our young people are certainly involved with it. And because of the kind of levels of our young people are being subjected to, we've got very high levels of psychological distress across all our, our states and territories. So, you know, over a third of most um, uh, school kids these days are experiencing those high levels of, of psychological uh, trauma. And what we have also is, you know, the majority of schools are reporting bullying and antisocial behavior creeping into the online arena, into, into a technological front. So things which, you know, used to be name calling and physical fights within the playground have quickly transformed over to uh, learning platforms, instant messaging, social media, you know, right through to just using, you know, notepads and uh, digital uh, uh, smartphones and tablets and writing nasty messages and showing them to each other, those kind of behaviors. And, you know, we're seeing this increasingly in the classroom and in the school uh, uh, arena. 
And the one thing which we have seen is the people who are exposed to this kind of risks and this kind of behavior are not the older kids. It's not the year 12 when people are going into further education, tertiary education or the workplace. It's those people who are slap bang in the middle of years um, year six and seven, right up to years uh, uh, 10. You know, those 10 to 14, 15 year old people are the ones who are most exposed to this online bullying activity. Let's not forget about the teachers. Uh, teachers, you know, always have and always, you know, probably will continue to just because of the kind of work they do. Standing up in front of young people and managing young people are exposed to high levels of occupational stress as well. And it's no real surprise that teachers have more, you know, make more mental stress, uh, stress claims than any other industry, that, uh, than other industrial sectors. So you know, we want to make sure that our adults and uh, adults and teachers and staff members who are participating in school are also afforded the same kind of protection. Now this is the kind of key slide. It's the one I like to talk about the most because I will always talk about indicators of behavior and early intervention. If we can stop people, you know, if we can detect someone having low level mental health issues, you know, it, it, behavior which might be a, a deviation from a norm, you know, or certain kind of activity which is a cry for help, we can hopefully reduce uh, that from manifesting itself in self harm and suicide. It could be that, you know, identifying our vulnerable users can make sure that they are protected from going making bad life choices, whether it's, you know, drug use, criminal activity or, you know, antisocial behavior. And if we can stop the bullying at the name calling, we can hopefully reduce the amount of violence which our young people are exposed to. So hopefully this is all, all pretty, pretty, uh, um, you know, pretty kind of common sense to everyone. But just to reiterate that early detection of behavior can lead to positive outcomes. Okay, we're going to move this over now to a little bit of more of a conversation. Now, this is this is a new slide into my slide deck recently because whenever I'm talking about deploying safeguarding tools, whether it's on-premise appliances, endpoint clients, managed services, whatever it is, there is often a discussion about whether this is going to be able to afford protection. And there are essentially two questions which need to be asked when looking at managing devices, when looking at managing behavior. And that's really about where the device is actually located. And I mean, logically speaking, what network is it connected to? Is it connected to something which is owned by the school and managed by the school? And that device itself, does it have management capabilities by the school? Now, these kind of decisions not only affect things like purchasing and uh, parental involvement and things like that, but they also affect how we are able to monitor those devices. It effectively draws the demarcation between the school's responsibility and the parent and the student's responsibility. So the two questions you need to ask yourself is, is the device managed or is the device on a managed network? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, you are able to provide some safeguarding protection for that person. If, it, if the device is a, a pure BYOD device or um, is a, you know, a guest device, or indeed that device is at home or taken off site on a field trip or to another location like an external council library, for example, and you don't have either of those protections, you are not able to afford a meaningful enforcement and safeguarding posture. So when I'm talking about the management device debate, it's quite clear that you need to actually look at what kind of relationships you have with parents, what kind of management profiles you're able to deploy, and whether this kind of protection is gonna be able to be effective for you. Hopefully it is, and if it is, then we've got some good news for you. Because Smoothwall has been an education-focused, safeguarding delivery partner for the best part of 20 years. We've produced leading firewalling and networking devices, and recently we changed our focus to be purely about safeguarding. We see that things like web filtering and firewalling fit very, very nicely into a range of other kind of disciplines which are able to provide well-being services to our customers. In fact, our range of products fully support that. We have the old web filter product, so the old secure web gateway, network guard. It's come by various names, but it is still that market-leading enterprise web filter product. We've expanded its capabilities recently to not only be on-premise protection, but to provide filtering and monitoring capabilities on an endpoint device. 
So we are able to actually control that de ma managed device, no matter where it is, and actually affect a web filtering solution upon it. Coupled with the web filter is our on-premise firewall, which gives great inbound protection. Not what we're here to talk about today, so I'm going to quickly move on. Smoothwall Monitor is one of our new range of products, which is specifically targeting safeguarding. We're doing it in a number of different ways, and I'm going to go into more details in a bit. But essentially, this is the thing which is going to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of providing pull-ups, indicators, detecting indicators of behavior and the earlier intervention. And then we've got our new classroom management product as well, which is all about providing tools to uh, teachers and classroom environments to you know, enable good learning and minimize distraction. But let's look at the two which we're here to do today, which is our smooth oil filter and smooth oil monitor. So let's go into those. Let me just have a quick, quick drink, so bear with me one second. Smooth oil um, filter uh, has always provided very good filtering with our, you know, the technologies it uses, such as dynamic content analysis, content modification, HTTPS inspection, amongst others. We were able to, you know, we've always prided ourselves on being one of the best classification engines available to education today. And we've taken this technology and always exposed uh, a great reporting. But recently, we've given new reporting capabilities, which allow us to actually uh, highlight safeguarding issues. In fact, rather than showing a screenshot, let's go over to our demonstration and have a quick look at this here. So here we have a smooth oil filter. It's an on-premise solution. And like I said, it can also be used to control the web filter, uh, the cloud filter element as well. And all this information is kind of concentrated back to the on-premise solution. And from there, we're able to build reports. And here we have our range of uh, uh, safeguarding reports. So let's go into this interface here. Quite an easy interface to use. And this interface can be exposed in a portal which teachers can access, or more accurately, digital, uh, uh, digital uh, safeguard leads, pastoral care, uh, those kind of people can get to immediately. What we can do is we can report against seven known rule sets related to safeguarding. Those are abuse, adult content, bullying, criminal activity, radicalization, substance abuse, and suicide. So let's pick one of those here. And I can actually uh, further filter my uh, reporting and uh, um, capabilities to a, a specific user group or cohort. And I can also you know, report over various date ranges. I'm just going to look at things which have gone through the filter today. And then I go ahead and run the report. And what we can see is we actually get reports about specific individuals. Again, safeguarding is a personal thing. It, you know, it's, it's something which is a user instigated action as opposed to a machine or technological instigated action. So the first thing we need to focus on is the person, the user. We get information about their specific uh, name. And then we've also got their user group here. And we can see that they have actually triggered one of our self-harm categories. And the level of severity which we're actually detecting is dangerous. So that might indicate that there's a significant problem which needs attention. So let's go ahead now and actually click on here and get some further information. And what this is doing is it's looking at the web behavior that that's, that, that's been seen by that particular user over a period of time and showing things which are indicating breach. And just to re-emphasize the point, because this is a network protection, fundamentally this is the thing which sits at the edge of your network and does all your web filtering, it is applicable to both managed and BYOD environments. Because someone is using your infrastructure, we can enforce that they are going through our filtering technology and therefore able to provide this level of reporting and capabilities to them. So we can see that Rod is actually, looks like he's been going to a couple of different websites. He's been typing in some Google search um, uh, terms, which might give us concern. He's been going to websites which are known to, put, uh, put, you know, to, to pass on content related to the subject matter. And if I choose to, I can actually get further information by clicking on here and getting additional information about what was happening both prior and after the breach. And we can see here, this can also surface further information which might not have been picked up as blocked activity. So if you look here, we can see that uh, Wikipedia has been accessed as a resource. And we can see that education reference was the reason. So that's the reason why it didn't show up in the initial report. It might be, we don't want to reduce the number of false positives being seen. And you know, Wikipedia is a good educational resource. Uh, but we can also see that he's been accessing uh, content which might give us calls for concern.
And all of this information is great. It gives us great historical reporting on behavior, and we advise our digital safeguarding leads or you know, people in safekeeping and children, student welfare roles to go in here and regularly run reports and see what's going on. But because it's so good, we've built a full notification engine around it. This allows us to actually send a variety of different reports, uh, either you know, weekly, monthly, or uh, daily kind of digest reports about specific user groups or indeed the entire user population. And if we choose to, we can actually target different uh, uh, recipients of these reports. And we can actually further um, reduce the amount of uh, uh, results, filter them down based on the rule safeguarding set. But we can also do instant alerting based on email and SMS if those have been set up. So because of this, we can see that we've got monthly and weekly reports going to heads of school and department. But we also can see that we can put various students or teachers on different kinds of behavior watch. So in his case, Rod might be given a specific suicide watch kind of uh, notification full set. So that's what we can do within the uh, safeguarding reporting within the filter product. Hopefully you can see that that can be applied to both managed and BYOD environments as well. Let's talk about the second thing which we usually to, to use to deploy within our a time frame, and that's smooth wall monitor. Like I said before, this is a technology which is specifically targeted towards providing safeguarding information. It was previously called smooth wall radar, and if you've heard us talk about this over the last 12 months, you might have heard it gone by that name, but we're completely rebranding this. As you can see, the, the whole smooth wall product set has been rebranded lately, and I spent a lot of time this week rebranding this uh, presentation into the new color scheme, but that, that's by and by. It used to be called radar, it's now called monitor self-service. And this is essentially an endpoint technology which gives us um, uh, safeguarding visibility into a managed device but no matter where that managed device is taken. So it might be taken off site, it might be taken home, it might be used in the classroom, it might be used anywhere on school premises. And it works in conjunction with the online filter as well. But what we're able to do is actually show what's going on on that device at a particular time. How do we do that? What we're actually doing is we're deploying an endpoint client and that allows us to actually monitor what is typed into the keyboard and what is shown on the screen. And we're using that information to make a determination about whether something is indicating a breach of safeguarding protocol. In fact, let's again, let's go over to the actual live implementation rather than looking at screenshots. So let me just move this out of the way and I'll go over to Smooth One Monitor. So this is Monitor uh, uh, Self Service. A monitor self-service allows us to actually filter what's going on quite nicely. As you can appreciate, these kind of technologies usually have a high level of false positives, things which aren't really breaches, but are being detected as which. So what we're able to do here is actually further able to give the uh, digital self-guarding lead, the DSL, the ability to go through and filter through and actually tease out the information about specific individuals or indeed specific kinds of behavior. And they use that using the filter. So an example of that might be that we can, filter, we can change the filter between what has been typed in and what is being viewed on the endpoint screen. And because of that, we're able to actually kind of get a determination whether, about, whether action is being instigated or whether someone's being a victim of a certain type of action. We can also change the themes as well, and similarly, we have the ability to categorize on various themes. We also have stuff coming through from different languages. We can pick up different user groups, and we can report over a certain uh, time period. But here we have the main technology which we use to filter what's going through. It's what's called that capture heat map. It's an ability, it's a pictorial reference to safeguarding breaches. What we have is we have the ability to go uh, to grade these kind of uh, breaches, and, and the technology is called pre-grading. It's very similar to SmoothWall's dynamic content analysis, but it's able to actually detect and, and make an assertion about whether something is a low, medium, or high severity, and then it puts them into yellow, amber, and red. The actual size of the bubbles indicates the number of captures which we've taken associated with that. And when I mean capture, what I'm saying is this is the evidence gathering part. If we detect that keyword being typed in, or if we that key phrase being typed in, or we see that kind of uh, behavior being shown on screen, we're going to take a screen capture at the time of breach to kind of evidence and give us further context. So let me give an example of that. Let's go ahead and look at one of these kind of phrases. Let's look at this one here, caliphate. Now, this might be a phrase which I've not come across before, so I get a nice little description of what that actually means. 
I then get an indication of the kind of time frame that these behaviors have been seen and who's been uh, engaged in this. And you know, I can actually do further filtering here. But the key bit I'm looking for is this little capture here. I'm going to click on here. And this is going to take us through to the capture listing. And the capture listing is actually the evidence which we're seeing as something as someone's accessed. Now, we might notice that this is running a little bit slow. That's because my demonstration system for this, the stuff with the actual da uh, demonstrating data in there, is actually located in the United States. But we do have our production instances here in Australia. So they've actually run out of Azure, uh, and we are able to actually provide both better performance because they're local, but more, more importantly, we're able to provide uh, data assurance and data sovereignty about that information staying onshore within Australia. So you can see here, we've got a capture listing here. Again, I get further information, you know, things about where that device is and, and things like that. But what I probably want to do is click on it and actually get information about the actual capture. That's possibly a little bit small, so I've got the ability here to enlarge. And we can see that this is actually an email conversation between the actual user, and it looks like he's sending things to external parties about behavior which might be classed as um, uh, illegal, and we might want to get involved with law enforcement or, you know, talk to him in a certain aspect around, you know, this particular kind of uh, t terminology he's using. We also can use the Smooth Law Monitor system to actually record safeguarding events and keep records about action. So we can actually grade this for further, further analysis. We can mark it as a false positive as necessary. And safeguarding lead people can actually go in here and write additional comments and say, you know, what action has been taken. So it can be used as a digital record keeping or safeguarding incidents as well. Let's quickly go through a quick another example. I'm going to go back over to the capture heat map. I'm just going to show a, a number of different other captures, and hopefully it won't take too long. Let's say, okay, let's look at this one. You know, this one, big bubble here. Sex with you was the phrase which you actually recorded, and here we can open up the captures, and what we'll see is actually it's a Gmail conversation between two of our um, school kids who are uh, who did you know, having a conversation about their sexual activity, and again, depending on the age and context and age differences between the two, it might lead to further safeguarding action as required. Because we're using an agent, no, we don't always focus on what is being presented in the browser. We have the ability to actually detect things which are outside of the browser. So applications, whether it's you know nasty words written in Word or uh, PowerPoint or Excel and shown to uh, other users. It might be stuff to do with you know, inside instant messaging clients or social media clients and apps and things like that. In fact, we have a very good um, uh, client kind of support as well. So we have clients for Smoothwell Monitor, um, safe service for Windows, Mac OS, iPad, and Chromebook, covering all of the major operating systems in use in Australian education today. So that's um, Smoothwell Monitor. I did promise you something a little bit special, and we're going to uh, show you something which is hopefully coming in the next couple of weeks to us. What, uh, what this is is a little sneak peek of Monitor Self Services sister product. It's called Monitor Managed, and it's very similar in its execution to Monitor Self Service. However, it has the added ability to provide a human element to breach detection. So it's an endpoint client. It deploys on a number of different client app operating systems. It can monitor type things typed in. It can monitor things being searched and things like that. But the key thing is, that information gets sent up to the cloud. Additional you know, machine learning and AI and all those buzzwords is applied to that knowledge. And then it's passed through to a human moderation team, which is com comprised of child psychologists, ex-law enforcement, uh, people who are really, really skilled in you know, detecting safeguarding instances. This service is offered on a 24 by 7 basis and allows the person to actually make a determination, a real human determination about what's actually being shown. Now, because of it's this kind of thing, it, it means that the uh, level of uh, involvement involved by the school in actually detecting breach and sifting through the information is vastly reduced. And that's shown through in the interface again. I'm going to go through to a live example as opposed to showing you one uh, or, or on there. So this is what monitor manage looks like. As you can see, it's a lot more slimmed down because you don't have the you don't actually have the ability to access individual breaches in the same way. We're actually taking that information from the people, from the digital monitor, or human moderation team, and they are providing you alerts and things to look at on, a, on a, almost by a case-by-case -case basis. 
again, we have a range of different kind of um, uh, categories or themes which we are actually using to uh, go here. But you can see these are a lot more personalized. So there's things like, you know, whether someone's been subject to cyber criminal, whether they're an oversharer, whether they're engaged in terrorist activity, or then just a general vulnerable user. So let's go ahead and click on one of these. And what we'll do is we'll get details of alerts which relate to that. So here we go. Again, we've got a categorization scheme, a severity kind of label. In this case, it's labels one to five. And that's important for what I'll show you in a moment. Because if we look here, we can actually get uh, information not only about the individual captures, which we do give you uh, the ability to look at, but you get a little kind of report on what the human moderation team has found. So we can see that in this case, they've been using a search engine to look up self-harm and uh, uh, categorization, and it's been engaged with conversation. So we can see that there is external input as well. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. Again, very, very similar. We're able to look and see very, very clearly that this person has been you know, writing into you know, in kids' helpline or child line, depending on you know, what, what jurisdiction this person's in. And this is across all of the different events which are available to the end user. So if we go back over to events, and I make sure I get this right. Dashboard, there we go, dashboard. Let's go ahead and have a look at uh, another one. Let's have a look at a cyberbullying or offensive user. So you can see the different distinctions here. Let's look at the cyberbullying. Gary has been making use of a, a, in a offensive words, and there's a bit of profanity there. So I'm not going to actually open up the, the screenshots, but you can see that this kind of level of behavior is stuff which is uh, indicative that certain behavior is being uh, instigated toward action towards another person. In fact, that person's named, and that can help the uh, you know the in, inter, uh, in, in, in school team get the two people together and find out what's going on. Again, showing patterns of behavior, indicators of behavior, which allowed to us to make early intervention, again, leading to positive outcomes. People asking about, you know, what about, how do we find out about this? You know, am I expected to go into this portal all the time? And the answer is, what we recommend is for both self-service and manage is that people will be going into this portal once a week and spending approximately 30, time, 30 minutes of their time just sifting through, seeing if anything is uh, particularly uh, uh, troubling. With the managed service, we also have very clear and defined alerting procedures. So I mentioned the levels one to five in terms of severity. In terms of what's going on for um, uh, managed is if it's reaching a search on threshold, there is going to be a, a particular action taken. So if there's potential paedophile activity going on, that school is going to get a, a, a phone call preferably within 30 minutes of the breach actually being detected and then allowing us, you know, the school to go ahead and put the, you know, follow their safeguarding and uh, student protection kind of procedures. And that goes across all of the different profiles and themes which were available. Different profiles and different alerting procedures are applicable to different uh, schools, age, whether they're primary schools, secondary schools or TAFE and university. And there we can actually you know, get good assurance that those high level risky kind of safeguarding issues are going to be dealt with promptly and then they'll be brought to the attention of the school in an extremely close to real time manner. So those are the three products which we wanted to kind of go through today. Uh, you know, Smoothwall Filter has the ability to detect and provide safeguarding protection in a BYOD as well as managed school environment by offering on-premise solution and with its uh, extension into cloud-based protection as well, can also surface various safeguarding issues using its safeguarding reporting functions. And then the two flavors of Smooth or Monitor, the self-service, school-managed, uh, everything is available to the digital safeguarding team within the school, plus these new Smooth or Monitor managed service solution, which gives you that human moderation element as well. Just to highlight a couple of use cases finally, just to wrap things up, just to show you that we have had some positive outcomes on all of the technology which you've seen today. You know, we, there were a couple of different instances. We've got one here where you know, uh, an adult was actually brought into the school and so was registered on a, a course and started sharing inappropriate material with the student body. And because of this, we were able to detect that behavior happening very, very quickly. In fact, within 45 minutes, and local law enforcement were informed, and that person was removed from site quickly. And it actually turned out that that person was a registered sex offender. So again, a positive outcome was yeah. was actually you know brought to the attention of the school by using the smooth wall monitoring capabilities.
And similarly, self-harm, you know, we've, we regularly come across instances of deploying our technology where we find young people in distress, but we find them at the early stages and hopefully we can get them, you know, get them assistance and help before those, those, uh, you know, those, those bad thoughts turn into real world actions with real world consequences. Okay, that's probably enough for me talking now. I'm going to hopefully invite Tanya to come back in. Tanya, over to you. Thanks, Dave. That was great. Um, if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to myself. I will personally touch base with everybody on the call today to hand over my contact details, and then we can have more of a one-to-one -one discussion. But I want to say thank you very much, and we'll definitely be reaching out very shortly and also giving you a copy of today's webinar as well. I'll just reiterate what Tanya's had to say there. If you've got any questions, clear them up. Or if indeed you want to look at any of the technologies we've looked at today in a little bit more detail, or just discuss how they're appropriate for your uh, particular circumstances, we can certainly go through that as well. So all it does is it reminds it, all it reminds me to say is thanks very much for your time and attention. We appreciate you spending the time. Um, we haven't kept you too late, I hope. 35 minutes is not too bad for this type of presentation. A lot of content to go through there. So if you need any further information, get in touch. And thanks again. Have a nice day. Bye-bye now.